Tesla recently unveiled their long anticipated robo taxi at an elaborate event at the Warner Brothers Studios, but unfortunately, the event was light on details about the robo taxi, or you could call it the cyber cab. However, over the last few days, more information has been coming out. So in this video, I want to help fill in the gaps and share quite a bit more information about this new car. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Tesla's original plan was for their robo-taxi vehicle to be built on an all new platform that would use their unboxed manufacturing process. However, as recent leaked info revealed, Tesla decided instead to build this new vehicle using a modified Model Y platform, which would allow them to get the vehicle to market much quicker. When it comes to what is meant by a modified Model Y platform, I believe this refers to the fact that this robo taxi has front and rear underbody castings, just like the Model Y. And like the Model Y had for a short period of time, I believe this robo taxi will have a structural battery pack with 4680 batteries. Yes, these vehicles are very different in many ways and the sizing is quite different. However, once again, I believe the underpinnings of that technology is very similar. With that being said, I do expect that this robo taxi will have 4680 batteries. I'm pretty certain they will be lithium iron phosphate based batteries, not the nickel based chemistry that Tesla is using right now in the Cybertruck. This is something that I discussed in a recent video, but based on information that was published in this article on theinformation.com, according to people who were familiar with the matter, Tesla is currently developing some new battery types, including this NC05 battery cell, which was referred to as a workhorse battery that would be used in the robo taxi and other vehicles as well, but specifically here since we're focusing on the robo taxi. And since this battery is being referred to as a workhorse battery, I believe that means that it's a lithium iron phosphate battery technology because of course, LFP batteries last longer, they're safer, and it would make sense financially for Tesla to use this in a vehicle that doesn't need a lot of range and needs to hit a certain price point. So I believe these batteries are going to be LFP batteries in the 4680 cell format. With that being said, when it comes to the exact battery size and the range of this vehicle, according to a Top Gear video, which I watched on this topic, apparently Tesla has not nailed down any precise figures yet because the engineers are still figuring it out figuring out exactly what the battery size needs to be and what the range will be. With that being said though, according to this Top Gear article, it looks like this electric vehicle will be the most efficient EV on the road. And I believe this information comes from Tesla engineers and it looks like they're targeting somewhere around 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour, which would be pretty impressive. And also a range of around 200 miles is also mentioned here. So if you do a little bit of math there, this means that the battery size is quite small, just a little bit over 36 kilowatt hours if you take that 200 miles and divide it by 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So we could just round that battery size up to say 40 kilowatt hours if you leave a little bit of a buffer. So it's potentially possible that this battery could be as small as around 40 kilowatt hours. However, in Tesla's master plan part three, Tesla illustrated in this chart what would be needed to replace the global fleet of vehicles with electric vehicles. And specifically here, you can see they've listed a number of vehicles with the Tesla equivalents. And when it comes to the compact vehicle type, they had the Tesla equivalent as to be determined TBD with lithium iron phosphate batteries and a pack size of 53 kilowatt hours. So it is possible that this vehicle could have a battery pack as large as 53 kilowatt hours, but as it looks right now, if that range is indeed somewhere around 200 miles, if it's on that low end, 200 miles, that would be once again around 36 to 40 kilowatt hours for that battery pack size. With that being said, I could see Tesla stretching that a little bit to a little bit over 50 kilowatt hours. So this vehicle could have quite a bit more range than just 200 miles. But I imagine Tesla is also wanting this vehicle to be as light as possible. And so having a smaller battery pack would allow for that. Obviously it's a smaller vehicle than the Tesla Model Y or the Model 3. And they very well could be using some very light body components to make it very light. But nonetheless, it looks like that battery size is at least 40 kilowatt hours in size, somewhere around there, maybe up to 53 kilowatt hours, but it's not exactly nailed down just yet. The engineers are still working on that. With that being said though, if this vehicle is quite a bit smaller than the Model 3 and the Model Y, and if it's only a two-seater, etc., 
I believe Tesla could even make it more efficient potentially than 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour. Because for example, according to Kyle from Out of Spec Studios, specifically the new long range rear wheel drive was tested and that vehicle achieved around 4.8 miles per kilowatt hour at highway speeds. This is something specifically that the limiting factor on X did point out here that if Tesla was able to reach around 4.8 miles per kilowatt hour for the Model 3, why would they not be able to get the cyber cab efficiency at six miles per kilowatt hour or higher? And at Eric E. Tesla, who actually is the lead engineer for Tesla's RoboTaxi design team, he specifically wrote here, quote, our targets are more aggressive than current status. Efficiency is also impacted by other customer facing value. So we need to find the right balance so that all of you actually love riding in one daily. D. McKay also pointed out on X that according to Elon, the computer in this robotaxi would consume around 1000 watts, which is a lot of power, which of course would affect the efficiency of the vehicle and the amount of range. So with that in mind, if this computer does take that much power to run the vehicle, that would make sense that the efficiency after all that would be 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So this does all seem to make sense, but I believe Tesla still could beat that 5.5 miles per kilowatt number, but I believe Tesla is going to be able to at least hit that. When it comes to some size estimates for this RoboTaxi, it may be built off of a modified Model Y platform, but it appears to be quite a bit smaller than the Model Y. And when you kind of compare the size of this vehicle to the Model Y, I haven't seen any real world side-by-side -side comparisons. However, if you just superimpose the RoboTaxi in front of the Model Y and you size these vehicles as closely as possible to the same scale, you can see that this RoboTaxi vehicle is quite a bit smaller than the Model Y, not only in length, but also in height. When it comes to charging the vehicle, it was made very clear by Elon that the cyber cab will not have a charge plug, but will charge wirelessly with inductive charging only. Now we don't know exactly how fast it'll be able to charge with inductive charging. Tesla was showing during the event, a graphic here of the vehicle charging. And you can see that it says the charge there is at 35%. And then on the right side, you can see that it was charging at like 25 kilowatts. So maybe the inductive charging for this RoboTaxi will not be super fast. Maybe it won't break double digits there. However, there are some companies that are developing some pretty efficient, fast inductive chargers. But at least we know right now that it looks like this vehicle will only use inductive charging. And from what we can tell, it may not be super fast inductive charging. When it comes to the exterior design of the vehicle, I love how clean and simplistic it is. And I love the curves of the vehicle. Of course, it has light bars that remind me a little bit of the Cybertruck, but the Cybertruck is very planar, whereas this vehicle has more curves to it. It also, the vehicle has no rear window, which is interesting, but you don't need that if you're not driving the vehicle. And of course the vehicle has cameras in the, the rear. It has cameras that give it a 360 view around the vehicle. So you don't necessarily need rear window in the vehicle. In addition, one of the most distinctive features about this vehicle is Tesla has butterfly doors on this car, which are incredible. I don't know really how practical this will be, and maybe Tesla will pivot and not actually have butterfly doors on the production model. However, Tesla has proven they can do unique doors, like for example, with the uh, Model X and those Falcon wing doors. Those were very difficult to manufacture, but Tesla did it anyway. But with that being said, this RoboTaxi is going to be a much higher production vehicle. So maybe it won't make sense to actually have these in production, but the way Tesla works, I believe there's probably an 80, 90% chance that the vehicle will be produced with these butterfly doors because that's how Tesla works. They generally bring out a prototype and the vast majority of the things on that prototype actually make it to reality. So if a regular company came out with a prototype vehicle with butterfly doors, I would say there's a low chance of it happening. But with Tesla, I believe it's a very high chance of the vehicle actually having butterfly doors. Now, when it comes to what the body of the vehicle is made of, it is not made of stainless steel like the Cybertruck. This was made clear by Eric E. Tesla on X, who once again is a lead engineer for Tesla's RoboTaxi uh, program. And he wrote here, quote, small correction, exterior panels are not stainless steel. Mass and cost of SS stainless steel is undesirable on our high efficiency robotaxi. Eric E. Tesla once again 
replying to a thread about the vehicle. Can't give away everything yet, but this also doesn't equal painting exterior. So I believe very possibly it's going to be some kind of aluminum body that's dipped or something like that instead of painted. With that being said, when it comes to trunk space, while this vehicle is small, it looks like it does have quite a large trunk, which should accommodate quite a bit of luggage, which I believe is really important for a robo taxi. I believe these vehicles will be used quite often to take people to the airport, things like that, or to pick up stuff from the grocery store. So a large compartment for storage is important here. And it looks like Tesla has that planned for the vehicle. When it comes to the interior, the interior of the vehicle is very simplistic and it has a very simple design and it has a very large 20.5 center display according to this Not A Tesla app article. Now, with that being said, I want to answer five quick questions as we move through this video. And the first question is, when will this cyber cab or robo taxi be available? Well, according to Elon, this vehicle should be available before 2027. Of course, Tesla could be late on that, but it looks like right now, late 2026 is when you should expect this vehicle to be available. Of course, limited at first, limited volumes at first, but then as Tesla ramps it up, it seems like they hope to mass produce this vehicle. The next question is, will consumers be able to buy this vehicle? And the answer is yes. But the third question is, how much will it cost? Well, according to Elon Musk, it looks like they're anticipating a price of less than $30,000. Of course, that price by 2026, by the end of 2026, uh, first parts of 2027, that price could be higher. But right now, they are targeting a price of less than $30,000. The next question I believe some people might have is, although this vehicle is a two-seater, do you believe Tesla will make a version, a four-seat version with a little bit smaller trunk available? And I believe the answer to that is no. And the reason I believe that answer is no is based on a response from Eric E. Tesla, who wrote this on X quote, if you need more than two seats, a Model Y will be there to serve your needs. That said, in RoboTaxi, we are required by law to include a top tether behind each seat on the back wall for child seat connections. Another question I believe a lot of people have about this vehicle is, does Tesla plan to sell a version of this vehicle with a steering wheel and pedals that will be driven by a human driver? And I believe the answer to that is no. As Matthew Donegan Ryan pointed out in this great thread on x.com quote, there are no plans to make a cyber cab with a steering wheel and pedals. Now, before I close this video, I do want to address the fact that Tesla does not have any fully autonomous vehicles on the road just yet. But during the robo taxi event, Elon Musk did state, quote, we do expect to start fully autonomous, unsupervised FSD in Texas and California next year. And that's obviously with the Model 3 and Model Y. Hopefully Tesla will be able to actually have unsupervised FSD in California and Texas at least next year. But if this actually happens, and I believe it's very possible based on what Tesla has been able to accomplish with their supervised FSD right now, it's been very impressive. But if Tesla is able to actually do that, by the time the robo taxi comes out in late 2026, before 2027 or so, it looks like Tesla will have quite a bit of experience with the Model 3 and the Model Y, and of course the S and the X, doing uh, unsupervised driving if they are able to hit that target of at least in Texas and California having this made legal. With all that being said, even if this takes Tesla a little longer than they anticipate here and it pushes out another year or two, I believe what Tesla showed at the event was extremely exciting and it does show a very exciting future. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And in addition, I'd like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.